Hey, it's Jason. I've been using the new Google Pixel 9 Pro for about a week now, and I gotta be honest, I came into this launch feeling like Google had to do something pretty big in order for the Pixel to be relevant in today's smartphone market, and dude, they may have pulled it off. I know it's early, but I think the Pixel is finally at a place where you can consider it a legitimate contender in the premium flagship phone arena with its updated design that is turning a lot of heads, as well as its unique take on how to deliver value to its user base. On that note, this has been one of the most fun smartphones I've tested in a while, and I use that term specifically because I think in the past couple years, there hasn't been enough focus on making phones more engaging for its users, and I feel as though Google is trying to fix that through the the Pixel 9 lineup. So today I'm gonna to go over how my personal experience has been with the Pixel 9 Pro to help you figure out if it may or may not be the right phone for you. But before we jump into it, I know you guys are always hitting me up for the wallpapers that I have on my phones. I made it super easy for you guys to get. Just sign up for my free newsletter. I send out a mobile wallpaper every week. It's also a fun way to engage with me on a more personal level. Link to the newsletter is in the description below. Okay, first, let's talk about the facelift that the Pixel 9 Pro received. Google decided to go with what works in this category as they used a blueprint that many other popular flagships have been using for years now. So you now have a completely flat front and back panel that's connected by a flat metallic frame. Does it sound familiar? Yes, but does it also look good? Absolutely. I already know that there's a lot of vocal critics out there saying that Google essentially created an iPhone with the Pixel 9 lineup, and I can't completely disagree because, no lie, the Pixel 9 Pro gives me some serious iPhone 14 Pro vibes with its polished frame and frosted back, but let's be honest, the Pixel is far from being the only phone that quote unquote copied this look. And rather than being a hater, I applaud Google for taking this familiar look and committing to its execution. When I first got hands on with the Pixel 9 Pro, I was surprised at how well it was put together, and it immediately was clear to me and many others who were at the Pixel 9 keynote that this was the most premium Pixel we've seen by a considerable margin. And one week later, that sentiment has only grown more true in my head. There are so many things Google did right with this design that I've since noticed. For example, the aluminum frame is slightly rounded on the edge and seamlessly blends into the glass on both the front and back, making it more comfortable to hold in hand. The new pill-shaped camera housing also works really well. It gives the phone a lot of character while still adding to the overall premium aesthetic. And I love how they went with the matte finish as opposed to a polished one like they normally do with the Pros. This makes the entire back of the device look a lot more stealthy and clean as it contrasts nicely against the frame, especially in this absolutely gorgeous obsidian colorway. Now, an important thing to note is that the Pixel 9 Pro comes in two different sizes. You get the regular Pixel 9 Pro that has a 6.3 inch screen and a Pixel 9 Pro XL that comes with a larger 6.8 inch display. Both have Super Actua LTPO OLED panels that have a full HD plus resolution and new peak brightness levels of 3000 nits. They're also equipped with the new ultrasonic in-display fingerprint readers that are faster and more reliable than the dated optical sensors Google was using for quite some time. And I think when you put it all together, it's not outrageous to say that these are some of the best screens on any smartphones to date. The new peak brightness really does make a difference when you're outside on a sunny day, and it's great that the Pixel can now keep up with the competition in this area. The slim symmetrical bezel, though subtle, does enhance the user experience when you're consuming content, and using the Pixel 9 Pro does feel like an overall more refined experience. And when it comes to performance and features, without question, the thing that Google harped on the most was AI, which to be fair, they did concede was the most overpromised and underdelivered thing up to this point. But both phones are rocking the new Tensor G4 chip, a processor that is hat in hand not meant to be the most powerful when it comes to your standard benchmarks, but is optimized specifically to manage AI related tasks. It's also now beefed up with 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is a step up from the 12 from last year and a welcome change. The new Pixel 9 Pros also now have a vapor chamber that helps keep the phone cool during intense workloads, and even though it's early, I haven't noticed any major flare ups like some of the older Pixel struggled with, so the new design seems to be doing better so far. And from a general non-AI day-to-day -day perspective, the Pixel 9 performs great as navigating around Android OS is smooth, I'm getting virtually no throttling on the high refresh rate, and gameplay on the device has been enjoyable and stutter-free. Now, when it does come to the bevy of AI features that Google has been touting on this phone, there's definitely a varying degree of usefulness to them. For example, the Pixel 9 Pro can now use Gemini to summarize YouTube videos, and it's surprising 
surprisingly fast and easy to do, and it can be really helpful if you're just wanting the gist of what is being said and you don't want to manually scrub through the video. You also get access to the new reimagine feature on the Magic Editor that also works really well. You just select a part of the photo like the one I have here, and then you could reimagine said area with something like storm clouds, and after doing its AI magic, it does a surprisingly good job of transforming the picture to what you asked for. Now you also get access to the new Pixel Studio on the Pixel 9 Pro, basically Google's AI image generator that can create images for you based on written or verbal prompts. It works surprisingly fast, and it's definitely a feature that enamors anyone that tries it out, but it's not something I think most people are going to use beyond a parlor trick to show your friends. The same goes with the new Add Me feature on the camera. Again, it works pretty well, and I can see this being useful in extremely rare circumstances, but I'd argue that most won't use this feature as it's easier and way faster faster to just ask someone to take a photo for you. Now, a new AI feature that has impressed me a lot is the new Gemini Live. It is a feature that is exclusive to Gemini Advance, which is a paid service, but you do get a one month free trial with the purchase of any Pixel 9, and it's really interesting. Gemini Live is Google's most advanced AI assistant that is designed to feel a lot more natural and intuitive to talk with, and one week later, this is by far the most natural I've felt interacting with any AI. It picks up on more subtle nuances to your prompts, and remembers them as you follow up with others, and what's really cool is that you can interrupt at any time without saying something like, hey Google, and it does a really good job of keeping up. So I'm looking to go on vacation this winter, and I want to go somewhere that's warm, beachy, and has all-inclusive resorts, but doesn't cost an arm and a leg to go. There are some great options for warm, beachy, all-inclusive resorts that won't completely break the bank. The Caribbean is a good place to start your search. Yeah, Countries like the, the Dominican Caribbean Republic and really Mexico the have plenty um, of- A couple summers ago, what other options are out there? Okay, if the Caribbean is out, there are still some great warm weather beach destinations. Now, impressive as it is, I'm not sure yet how useful this is gonna be, especially for a paid service, but I do feel as though this is the future of AI assistance, and I see a lot of potential, and one week later, this is probably the AI feature that has impressed me the most. Now, as interesting and fun as these new AI features are, I think for most people right now, the component that is still gonna be the most important when it comes to any Pixel device is its camera quality, and the Pixel 9 Pro is no slouch. It has a triple camera setup on the back with your standard wide-angle ultra ride and five times telephoto zoom and a pretty beefed up selfie camera that now comes in at 42 megapixels. So first, the photos coming out the main cameras on the back of the Pixel 9 Pro come out looking strong as they're sharp and vibrant images that still maintain that pixel color signature. There are times where there's a bit too much magenta dominating the color palette, especially in low light conditions, but it's safe to say that the Pixel 9 Pro continues to lead when it comes to still images. Where it gets interesting is with the updated selfie camera, you'll notice right away how much wider it is, you get way more into the frame than the competition. It also performs really well, selfies come out tack sharp, just look at how it compares with the selfie from my iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's quite a noticeable difference. Now it still struggles a bit with portrait selfies as edge detection is not the best, but overall I think this is a really good upgrade by Google. Now when it comes to video, the Pixel 9 Pro can natively shoot in 4K resolution at up to 60 frames per second. The video has gotten better over the years, especially with sharpness and colors, and even though it's not at the iPhone level, it's above average in the world of smartphone video. Now the Pixel 9 Pro does have a feature called Video Boost that basically sends the video that you took to Google's machine learning AI to process it and make it better, and apparently it can now upscale the footage to 8K resolution. Now this is limited to 30 frames per second, and because it has to be sent to the cloud, it does take a really long time to process, and I will say that the results are better in my opinion, but I wouldn't call it a night and day difference unless you're shooting in low light. And considering how long it takes to get back from the cloud, I'm not sure how practical of a feature this is. Okay, the last thing that I wanna to touch on with the Pixel 9 Pro and the Pro XL is the price. The regular Pro starts off at $999 US, while the XL version starts at $1099. And look, I recognize the prices have gone up, which no one likes to see, but given the long list of upgrades here, I'm not that pissed about it. The Pixel 9 Pro to me is now a legitimate contender to the iPhone 15 Pro and the S23 Ultra. Now we'll see if that changes with Apple and Samsung getting ready to launch their new devices really soon, but what Google was able to pull off is no doubt impressive. And ironically, I think the phone that gives the Pixel 9 Pro the most trouble is the regular Pixel 9 that starts off at $799, but has many of the same features. I just did a one week later review on it. You should check it out 
right now.